traffic! So I saw the X-Men Apocalypse recently, this past weekend. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, it was just a generic uh, kind of X X-Men movie. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Poe Dameron did a uh, did a good job as uh, as Apocalypse there. And, uh, he's all yes, my child, yes. He got very slimy, snaky sort of Egyptian. Yes, so Mr. Burns kind of thing. Anyway, yeah, so he did a good job and. Uh, with Periscope so far has been that the app tends to crash unexpectedly. And that's a problem when you're trying to live broadcast things and then of course save them later. Um, because it makes that whole saving bit very difficult in addition to making the whole like well, broadcast thing very difficult. Uh, especially if I'm in the car here, you know, there's not a whole lot of options I have to sort of uh, try to figure out what's going on. You know, pretty much just have to kill the app and start over. A long day today. Not like a super long day, but kind of a long day. Kind of one of those days where you're just like, when will this end? And now it's over and I'm driving. I'm driving again. Somewhere in this crazy land we call Southern California. Interesting to note that I uh, actually have uh, some subscribers to this, uh, this thing. That's kind of cool. I, I feel like popular-ish. Um, thank you all for subscribing. Uh, even though my little viewer account says that nobody's watching you, but whatever. Um, anyway, you're, you're all you're all welcome to uh, to join me on this little experiment. Uh, also getting subscribers on YouTube, which is really interesting because I've been on YouTube for years now, uh, close to 10 years now, and uh, I've been making videos on YouTube, and uh, it's only just recently that I've started actually getting like a subscribership. Of course, it's really sort of, you know, just recent that I'm making videos more regularly. I mean, I'm making videos, I don't make a lot of videos. But I guess the ones I've been making recently have been interesting to people, and now it's sort of it's sort of coming through the whole nurturing thing and whatever. So that's fun. Enjoying my notoriety. What notoriety there is. It's like if you can add on the internet. There's the old aphorism. You add the words on the internet to the end of anything, and it just suddenly makes it infinitely sadder. So, you know, there's the, you know, there's the guys, you know, what do you do? Well, I make movies. Oh, really? That's interesting. On the internet. Oh, well, gee, yeah. What do you do? I write books. Oh, that's so interesting. On the internet. Oh, gee, well. It's like it, it, it you know, when you say on the internet, it, it lends itself to being somehow uh, less legitimate, which I think is funny, because, I mean, that was a joke from 10, 15 years ago, um, and now it's so totally different now, uh, everything, if you're not on the internet, if you're not doing something on the internet, you're just not doing it. Cable television, uh, traditional broadcast television is just falling apart. Uh, falling apart at the seams. Over streaming services, heard me off, I'm yawning here. Over streaming services like the YouTube and, and Hulu and Netflix and all that, they can't figure out what to do. Meanwhile, YouTube's trying to monetize the shit out of everything. And, you know, I understand. 
understand it. I don't necessarily like it because the whole point of YouTube was to be very democratic and to be, you know, anybody could get on there and post just about anything. It's sort of like eBay was back in the day. eBay, you can fucking sell a, a, a used, <laughs> used possum skeleton, you know, for 50 bucks on eBay, whatever. And somebody would buy it too. Ten people would bid on it, somebody would have been. But, uh, so, it's interesting how the technology and the platforms have evolved to sort of create their, their own thing. Look at my freaking hair, man. It's like all over the damn place. I'm not wearing my hat. Oh, I sort of like this, uh, you know. Kudos if you like the look. Um, thumbs up or whatever you do on this platform. You tap the screen and it sends little hearts up or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm still learning this thing, okay? You know, there, there's always a learning curve with every every uh, platform. And uh, especially because I do this on my own, I, I do this in my spare time. I'm not a, uh, not a professional by any means. It's not like this. So, you know, I sort of build this from the ground up. I, I go I go with the whim. Uh, on my whims, not the whims of the crowd necessarily. Um, but we're just here having a good time, having fun. Hello, Blue Thunder, how are you? That's Blue Thunder, that's my favorite. That's the, uh, if you don't know what Blue Thunder is, look it up. That's all I can really say. So what's new and exciting? What's new and new and new and exciting? There's a video floating around. I'll, I'll post this onto uh, airbornesurfer.com a little bit later. Uh, video floating around of uh, two uh, gentlemen, uh, two professional drivers. Uh, we don't call them professionals. They have like the saddest the saddest little fight on the uh, on the track uh, during a uh, NASCAR truck race and it's you know it wouldn't be that sad of a fight I mean it's kind of a it ends up looking like a half-assed uh, hockey fight because they sort of use the same hockey uh, you know, the same strategy that you, know, you use when you're fighting in hockey you know, just, just grab onto the other guy and use that leverage uh, sort of judo-ish in that respect but uh it's infinitely sadder when you're not on the ice because that's the reason you do that in hockey is the, you know, Newton's third law. You know, when you punch somebody, you're going to go flying backwards on ice. So you hang on to the guy, then you punch him. He's trying to do that on, the, on concrete. It's just, it just doesn't translate very well. And it's very funny. Um, but they got, uh, they got the, uh, the gentleman who does the commentary or the color commentary or the play-by-play, whatever you want to call it, for the uh, WWE, the wrestling fights. Uh, I got him to do the commentary on this, uh, this little video snippet. It's actually very funny. Um, so, like I said, I'll be posting that to AirborneSurfer.com here in the next year or so. Uh, take a look at it. It's very funny. Otherwise, just go look at it. Uh, go look it up yourself. Oh, uh... So Facebook is changing their algorithm a little bit. I read this. So. Uh, I kind of don't like this because well, I don't like Facebook. I don't like the way they run the, the, the news feed anyway. Um, it's hard to find things. It's really hard to find stuff on, you know, if you want to go back and look at something on Facebook. And what really annoys me about Facebook is that it will update while I'm looking at it. So I'm reading something on Facebook, and then it will update while I'm trying to read something, and then that thing will be gone and I can't find it again. Um, so I don't like Facebook's uh, time. Ever since they went from the uh, chronological timeline to just simply insisting that you do the featured stories type timeline, and they change it, you can change it in the settings and they'll change it right back. It's very annoying. Very, very annoying, Facebook. This is why I'm not a fan. I 
do stupid shit like that, you alienate your users. You are the chosen one! No, no. Anyway, so that's why I'm mostly on, uh... Mostly, well, I mean, hell, I'm... I'm on, uh, I post from airbornesurf.com. You can, you can, uh, uh, syndicate to both Twitter and Facebook. Uh, so you, you can see posts and you can comment on posts from either site, uh, and they will be reflected on the original post at airbornesurf.com. I personally recommend that people simply uh, use an RSS feeder, uh, an RSS reader, excuse me, so, such as Feedly. Um, personally, I recommend using RSS um, because it is an open source uh, syndication system. Um, and you can subscribe to anything that you want to look at anything that interests you, and uh, you can scroll through it at your leisure, and it's all there, and uh, you, you're not being necessarily curated to by somebody else. Uh, you're not relying on an AI to tell you what to read. Um, so I like this approach. Uh, most people don't understand how RSS works. Most, most people never had a chance to really learn how RSS works, uh, and that's a shame. That's a shame. Because if Google had kept Reader, uh, I think that I think that it would have uh, would have been nice. I think that people would have caught on eventually and started using that. Uh, and Google could have monetized Reader. They could have injected ads into Reader instead of trying to force everybody onto Google Plus, which is a platform that nobody likes, not even Google employees. Uh, yeah, sad true. Uh, nobody likes Google Plus, and yet Google really just forced it on everybody, and that was annoying. Yeah, there, there, there comes a time when this level of responsibility, whatever you want to call it, uh, gets to be... Uh, the companies or, or entities or so forth, they get a level of power... They want to exercise that power, and they want to make everything cool, oh, awesome, you know, at least in their mind. And it doesn't work for the, uh, ends up not working for the user. And the user experience deteriorates because of, look at Apple, look at Google, look at uh, Android. Uh, and not so much Android, because Android is a different animal, because Android is uh, more customizable and more, uh, I shall say, user-friendly. Hey, me. More user friendly than say Apple is in the fact that if we define user friendly in the Linux sense that it is completely customizable and does exactly what the user wants it to do uh, instead of what the company that made the software wants it to do. Uh, but yeah, open source versus closed source, always, always, gonna, always, always going to default to open source open development uh, simply because you're able to do more and you're able to, to, to use it more often and use it in the sense that you are actually doing exactly what you want to do. And again, it's the tools in the box uh, creating a thing using the tools that you're given and you're allowed to use in whatever manner you feel necessary. Right. Now, Ms. Dang, Godforsaken freeway with all of its godforsaken traffic on it. Welcome to Los Angeles. City of Angels and stupidity. Rest. Oh, oh, interesting thing that I found out today. Apparently we have not one, but two alleged federal criminals running for president right now. And both of them are the front runners for their respective parties. Isn't that lovely? This is the state of American politics in 2016. On one side, we have a we have a, a person who is under federal investigation for uh, leaking classified information, the same crime, the same crime 
that one Edward Snowden is sitting in Russia in exile because he allegedly committed this crime. It's the same crime that Edward Snowden allegedly committed and that person is running for president on the Democratic ticket. And she's the front runner right now. Isn't that amazing? Well, now, what we have now, we have um, a pompous ass windbag on the Republican side who is soliciting donations, soliciting, soliciting election donations from foreign nationals. There's a reason that you're not allowed to accept gifts from foreign heads of state in this country if you're a head of state. Um, or an ambassador or what have you. Conflict of interest, y'all. Anyway, so, both of them threats to national security. Uh, both of them uh, should probably not be running for president. However, one of them is likely going to win. That's the scary part. 